When I first met Adebayo in business school, one of the things I immediately noticed was his energy, this incredible optimism that he had. Like he would always want to wring out the best of every moment and he would always ask, who would make the world better if not us? And then he would pause and then the corners of his lips would lift up into a pearly white smile. Adebayo loved to smile. And he's a really funny guy, so I would often joke with him, hey, Adebayo, one day I'm going to see you on a toothpaste commercial. <laughs> and then he would joke back, well, Amy, the darker the complexion, the brighter and whiter the smile. <laughs> he was super funny, great attitude, very positive. And once I got to know him better, I learned why. See, Adebayo is from Nigeria. And 15 years ago, he almost died from a single dose of fake asthma medicine. What his father thought he had been purchasing from the local pharmacy was Ventolin medication, but what he actually bought was poison. And after consuming it, Adebayo immediately fell into a coma for 21 days. 21 days, guys, that's three weeks roughly 500 hours, 30,000 minutes, 2 million seconds of being trapped in a coma, 2 million seconds of straddling that fine line between life and death, and 2 million seconds of agonizing pain for family and friends, not knowing whether or not the patient would live to see the next day. Now, luckily, Adebayo was able to pull through, afforded a second opportunity at life, and became one of my closest friends, but most victims of counterfeit medicine, just like the ones that Adebayo took, aren't as fortunate. Most victims of counterfeit medicine never wake up from their comas. If I were to ask you to tell me, of the two pills shown here on the screen, which one is real and which one is fake, how would you tell? Would you be able to tell? Sure, you've got 50% chance of getting it right, but that also means you have 50% chance of getting it wrong. And the consequences of getting it wrong in this case are deadly. And yet, this is a guessing game or a Russian roulette on life, if you will, that people in emerging countries have to play every single day. One million people die from fake drugs every single year, and in some countries, over 50% of the drugs that you can buy off the shelves of pharmacies are either fake or substandard. And if you buy medicine online, well, online your odds look like this, with the drugs X'd out as the ones being fake. If you're starting to count, I'll spare you some time, over 50% or 60% of the drugs that you buy online are either fake or substandard. So how do you know that the drug you've got is real? New science and some new technology is finally letting us answer that question. But in order to explain how it all works, first we've got to understand what a fake drug is, how it is bought and sold in the marketplace, and what it'll take to solve the problem. And I'm so glad that all of you are here today because what we're about to learn in the next few minutes might just one day save a life. A drug is considered counterfeit when it either doesn't have all the good stuff that it promises or it replaces all the good stuff with the bad stuff. That's it, really. It's not rocket science. It's a problem that's very easy to describe but devilishly hard to fix. These are drugs that have never been approved by healthcare authorities, have probably never seen the insides of a testing lab, and just as you saw earlier, probably look identical to the original medicine with the naked eye, but then contain completely different ingredients at its core. In the best case scenario, a fake drug would be filled with a substance that's relatively harmless. This would be something that passes through the body like chalk, or even plastic, and I say it's relatively harmless and it does no damage through the body, but at the same time, who would ever wanna eat chalk or plastic, right? And that's really the best case scenario. In the worst case scenario, a counterfeit drug would be filled with something that, that is more toxic, and this would be something like floor wax or boric acid, and a chemical substance that can really cause anything from an allergic reaction to serious injury to death. 
And so that's really what we're up against. It's an enemy that's hard to see, difficult to detect, lives all around the world, and can either give us the sniffles or total simultaneous organ heart failure. Clearly, we've got our work cut out for us. Now, a problem of this magnitude exists for several reasons. And the first is that the drug counterfeiting industry is deeply, deeply lucrative. Best estimates suggest that the global counterfeit drug market is $320 billion. And to give you an idea of how much $320 billion is, that's the entire GDP of South Africa. Yep, 58 million people, the entire nation. And to give you an idea of how the counterfeit drug market compares with other illegal drug markets, well, the worldwide combined total of the heroin and cocaine market is only $160 billion. And I know I say $160 billion, that's still a really big dollar sign, but when you compare it to the counterfeit drug market, it's really only half. And so if you are involved in a legal business and you're looking to make a quick buck or two, you don't really care about repeat customers, guess which market you're going to choose. And the reason why this market is so big is because, well, fake drugs are really, really hard to see. Just as we saw earlier, not only in many cases, the pill is absolutely identical to the original medicine, but the packaging is often the same as well. And the counterfeiting industry is only becoming more and more advanced nowadays that even medical professionals cannot tell the difference. I certainly wasn't able to when I was traveling abroad. Four years ago, just to share a little bit about my story, when I was working abroad in China, one night I had um, a mild stomach pain. And so I decided to go to the local pharmacy to purchase some pain relievers. Well, I ended up purchasing the China equivalent of Pepto-Bismol, and after taking it for one week, not only was I not feeling any better, my symptoms were worsening, my body was getting weaker, and it wasn't until I went to the hospital after I showed the doctors the packaging of the pills I had already swallowed and ingested that they informed me that the drugs that I had taken were counterfeit. I mean, who knew what were in those drugs? All I know is that it didn't kill me, but it helped me realize one very, very painful reality, and that's that it can happen to anyone, anywhere. Now, I know you're probably sitting in your seats now thinking, sure, fake drugs seem like a really big problem abroad, but I should be safe here at home, right? I mean, the stuff that I get from the local pharmacies, they've all been tested, right? And the answer to your question is, it's complicated. See. Your chances of encountering a fake drug here in the United States is lower than that of a third world country. To give you an idea, the global drug counterfeit supply to the United States is 1% or less than 1%. So one, one pill out of 100, if even that many. But that one pill can still be that one pill that you take. And considering that the United States, the global prescription drug sales accounts for 40%, and then most of the active ingredients are produced in countries that have drug counterfeiting problems, you start to get the sense that even here in the United States, we're not 100% safe. And good luck if you're buying medicine online. Take Viagra, for example. Believe it or not, it's the, the United States' most counterfeited medicine. Take a guess. What percentage of Viagra sold online is fake? Any takers out there? I'll give you a hint, it's more than 60%. 70%, I think I heard someone say that, bingo. 70% of Viagra sold online is either fake or substandard. And so if you're purchasing Viagra online without a prescription at a very low price, or actually if you're purchasing any medicine online without a prescription at a very low price, more than likely it will be fake, and you'll have no way of knowing what's actually in it. All right, so let's recap what we've learned so far. Fake drugs are very lucrative, and they're hard to see, but easy to buy. There's one more reason why this problem has become so big, and that's simply because many people don't actually know that the fake drug crisis is in fact well, a crisis. 
Awareness of counterfeit medicine in many countries is so low that the country pharmacists and nurses administering these drugs have not even heard of the issue. This isn't really something that they learn about in medical school, and it's not really something that we hear about every day in the evening news. It's a problem that works by stealth, and until we can fix it, it will only continue to cause us more and more harm. All right. So now you're probably sitting there thinking, great, thank you, Amy, for delivering all of this news. I'm now officially afraid to purchase the Tylenol um, at CVS down the street. How do we fight back? <laughs> well, my goal today is not necessarily to scare you. Rather, it's to show you how colossal this problem is and why we're needing to use all the latest and greatest technology out there to fix it. So with a problem as big as counterfeit medicine, as you can imagine, many solutions have been brought to the table. And in recent years, we've been seeing the latest technology advances um, in combating fake medicine. As victims of counterfeit drugs, Adebayo and I wanted to ensure that nobody would ever have to go through an experience similar to ours. And so we asked ourselves, how can we empower the patient using technology that they're comfortable and familiar, such as their cell phones, to authenticate medicine by themselves. And then we took it a step further and asked ourselves, how can we combine artificial intelligence and machine learning? And combining that with testing equipment so simple that any patient could learn how to use, and with the help of their cell phone and a click of a button, immediately be able to identify whether or not that drug that they just scanned or that drug that they're holding in their hand is real or fake. And so Eddie Bio and I put our heads together and we started to create the future that we wanted to see. Here's how the solution works. It's pretty much a four simple step process. First at a pharmacy, before a patient actually purchases their pill, they will scan the drug itself with a spectrometer. This testing device shines radio frequency waves on the drug itself so that it reflects back the chemical composition of the product. The chemical composition is called a medical spectra or medical signature. So if you scan a real drug, you'll get one set of signature. If you scan the fake drugs, you'll get another set of signatures. And then you'll be able to compare both signatures to identify any sort of deviations. So a patient, they would scan the drug using a spectrometer and immediately that signature would then be compared to a control base of authentic signatures of that particular drug in the cloud and immediately under 10 seconds on the patient's phone, they will be able to receive a notification informing them whether or not that drug that they just scanned is real or fake. So this entire process takes less than 10 seconds and in the back end, all of the data from the scan is then being fed up to an artificial intelligence platform that then utilizes machine learning, deep learning algorithms to learn where fake drugs more, are more likely to exist based off of the drugs that are being scanned. And so the solution is really not about um, just helping customers authenticate their products, but it's also about helping manufacturers make sure they are getting their drugs into the right hands of the right people. And if a drug is fake, then back in the United States, the solution would then be working with the global pharmaceutical companies and regulators in order to trace back the supply chain of fake drugs. So, does this solution actually work? Well, we've been pretty encouraged uh, by some of the successes that we've seen so far. Let's take a look at a case study with a global pharmaceutical foundation in Ghana. So in Africa, the most counterfeited drug um, are actually anti-malarial pills. Malaria is the most prevalent disease in Africa, kills about half a million people a year, and the medication itself is very expensive. And so oftentimes people will go to their local pharmacies to get cheaper alternatives or even go to secondary markets. So this device is now being used across 10 facilities across Ghana to authenticate the supply of malarial pills coming through the supply chain before it hits going down to the hospitals as well as the pharmacies and ultimately the hands of the consumers. And in just two months, with one device, the solution has already identified thousands of fake and substandard medicines that have since been removed from the supply chain. And that's really the impact that we've seen in two months. Imagine the impact that can happen in two years. And while you're imagining, 
the possibilities of authenticating products using artificial intelligence and molecular spectroscopy go beyond counterfeit drugs. People started asking, if you can scan drugs, can you scan food? How about the skin or a liquid? And the answer is yes. In fact, we're seeing a lot of interest in using the solution to identify harmful preservatives in frozen food, in using it to authenticate opioid and narcotic drugs, and finally, to use it to identify moisture in the skin. So imagine in the future going to a beautician before you have your facial, being able to scan your face and see where you're more likely to get wrinkles. That is the future and the possibility of this technology. So the technology itself is very exciting. And it's only becoming more advanced with machine learning and artificial intelligence. But you don't necessarily need one of these devices in order to protect yourself or make a difference. Because the thing that we need most today, more than testing equipment, is really just awareness of this counterfeit drug crisis. Awareness not only down the supply chain to the consumers consuming the drugs, but also up the supply chain to the pharmacies selling the drugs, to the manufacturers producing the drugs, and to the pharmacies administering the drugs. We need an entire global network of stakeholder community to be aware of the real dangers of fake drugs, because knowledge Knowledge is power, and in this case, it can save lives. You can avoid becoming a victim of counterfeit medicine by just educating yourself on the dangers of fake drugs today. In the future, when your friends or family are traveling abroad and purchasing medic uh, medicines abroad, or if they're purchasing medicine online, well, start asking some questions. If we all do the hard work to fight this problem, then the world that we create will be a world in which everyone can trust the medicine that they're taking. It'll be a world in which medicine will only make us well and not make us sick. And at the end of the day, isn't that what medicine should always be about? Thank you.